They said it wouldn't work. So it's lilac season and I've always wanted to try bronzing a lilac. I have no idea if it'll work, but there's only one way to find out. Don't ask the internet. Let's try it. So I carefully harvest a lilac that I think will fit inside the flask. Now the flowers are incredibly small and thin and the trick is going to be getting the metal to flow in such a small area. But you could look at it as the stems are already a natural sprueing system, feeding the metal into the flowers. I've done quite a few different organics burnout in the past, but never something quite like this. I let Splinter inspect the flowers and he gave me some good advice on how to get started. The first step is to make a base, so I take a small rubber funnel and fill it full of wax. This will be a really simple way to make the base. This base will be purely for function. I'm not going to spend a lot of time designing anything special here. This casting is mainly experimental so it's going to look like a prototype. I'll still sign my name though, so when people see this amazing sculpture, they'll wonder who on earth did this? And then they'll know. Oh, that was Lundgren from Lundgren Brown Studios. With a dialed down soldering iron, I'm going to melt a hole into the wax plug and just stick the lilac right in that. Like I said before, the stem of the flower is actually the sprue, so I'm not going to overcomplicate things. Looks good, huh? Yeah. Now the key to this casting is going to be this, a perforated flask. First thing I got to do is plug up all the holes. The perforated flask is specifically designed for vacuum casting. But I'll explain more of that a little bit later on. I went on a Facebook group and I asked anybody if they'd done this before to give me some advice. I'll get back to that in a bit. But first, I'm going to weigh out my investment and as usual, I'm going to use UltraVest. I get it from Rio Grande Jewelry Supply. This flask will take 7 pounds of investment. The water goes in first to help it mix better and then I mix it with my drill. Love the smell of lilacs. Now this is really pushing the limits of bronze casting. Place your bets. One thing I'm concerned of is when I fill this with investment, it's gonna start to try to push it in. Not sure if I should try to stiffen it up first. You can see when I poured the investment that it did start to push the lilac around a little bit. I'm hoping that when I put this in the vacuum chamber that the bubbles degassing from it will kind of shake it into place. I'll shake it around by hand and hopefully those flowers will float into their natural setting position. So this is cured and I let it rest for about two hours and now I'm going to break it open. So now our lilac is in there and I have to get rid of it. So the way I do that is by putting it in a kiln. The wax will melt out, the wood in the flowers will turn to ash, and then I'll have a void in the exact shape of the lilac. And I pour the molten metal in, and when I have this in the vacuum chamber, it'll draw air through the investment, through all these little holes, and it'll pull the metal into all those tiny little voids in theory. But in the kiln it goes. It's about 9 a.m. in the morning and this is at low temperature. I'm going to slowly ramp up the temperature throughout the day. I got a hole in my shirt. It happens when your muscles are so big. Anyway, I'll slowly ramp up the temperature throughout the day and come back when that's all burned out. Side note, can anyone tell me where the butterflies have gone? Butterfly! 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 butterfly. butterfly. Get it. When I was a kid and the lilacs would bloom, they'd be covered with butterflies. There aren't any anymore. Where'd they go? 
I don't have a set temperature control so I slowly ramp it up to red hot and when I check the temperature it's a little more than I'd like but I think it'll still be okay. Then I'll flip it to Celsius for my European friends and Asian friends and South American friends and Canadian friends and almost anywhere other than America. So it's about 3 o'clock and it's sitting at about 1400 degrees. I'm gonna let it sit there cooking for another six hours. Hopefully by then everything will be burned out to ash. Now I went online and I asked some people if they think this is gonna work and... You think you could do these things but you just can't! So far, you're not filling me with confidence. But you can't believe everyone on the internet. Except this guy. Now the first comment was simply, won't work. Very helpful, thanks. Why people comment the things they do? But also, how do you know? Yeah, how would he know? Thank you! <laughs> what a moron. Another person said, from much experience, that will not work. Especially in its current condition. Well, maybe you've just experienced the wrong experiences. More advice, you need lots of tiny sprues. Have you done it before? There's some other advice, like actually using hairspray to stiffen up the flowers. But it's too late now. We're going with it. We'll see what happens. I will say there were some very nice comments, like this one. If anyone could do the flowers, it would be you. I love your work. Keep pushing the boundaries of what is possible and keep sharing. Thank you so much. I'll try to live up to that one. Now how long it takes for this to burn down the ash, I don't know. But I do know without the presence of oxygen, it takes a lot longer than we're familiar with when we think of something burning. Once I'm sure it's burned down to ash, I'm going to take it out and put some compressed air through it to help blow out any ash and make sure it's as clean as I can get it before I pour the metal in. It then goes back into the kiln to keep it hot until we're ready to pour. Now for metal, I'm going to use the finest flowing metal I know of, silicon bronze. Now a good vacuum seal is going to be essential for this to have any hope of working. I use 100% liquid silicone. The flask is so hot that it ends up setting it on fire, but that's okay. As long as it seals, I don't care what it does. The hot flask will keep the metal liquid longer so it has time to flow into all those tiny voids. The vacuum will draw the metal into all those little spaces. To all the people who said this won't work, I'm sure you're just not familiar with vacuum casting. Got a good vacuum seal and that's great. That's just what I need. I'll let it cool for a bit and then it's time to quench it. So this will be the moment of truth. I think that's a lot better than people expected. Frankly, it's better than I expected. Sometimes you just have to prove strangers on the internet wrong. There's a lot of oxidation on it, so it's kind of black. I'll sandblast that off. But I'm amazed at how well that did work. Vacuum casting is just amazing. Never let people on the internet tell you you can't do something. The only way you'll know if it works or not is if you try it. You can do anything that that you want. Do what you want to do. Sandblasting is the only way to get the investment off of something like this. The problem with sandblasting is it dulls the finish and polishing is going to be a challenge but we'll come to that later. <clears throat> the metal completely captured the flowers and as thin as they are, that's really a testament to how well silicon bronze flows and how effective vacuum casting is. And normally I take a small wire wheel on a Dremel and polish my bronzes a little bit. These flowers are so fragile and so thin, I'm gonna destroy them if I try to do that. So to get any polish on this is really gonna be difficult. I don't think I'm gonna be able to do it, to be honest. But while I think on that, I'm gonna clean up the base just a little bit. The base isn't anything fancy, it wasn't meant to be, but I'll clean it up. My only goal here is basically just to make sure it has a flat bottom.
The base is one thing that I can add a slight shine to, so I'm going to take a small polishing wheel and just run over it a bit. I attempted to take a wire wheel and go over the flowers, but it's just too risky. I feel like I'm going to destroy it if I try. So giving this a shine is going to be difficult. It's too fragile. So what I think I'll do is I'll patina it and then give it a light sandblasting. That'll give it a little bit of color contrast. Maybe I'll try some light buffing again, but for now let's give it some color. For patina I'll go with liver of sulfur. Using hot water speeds up the reaction. This won't take long. It got a little darker than I meant to, but that's what the sandblasting's for. I'm gonna hit this really lightly. Just want a few highlights. I'm gonna try one more time with a fine brass brush to see if I can give this a little bit of a shine. I was able to hit a few petals by being very careful, but few and far between. Now the last thing I can do to give it a shine is put a clear coat. So I'm going to use some protect clear and give it a coat of that. Please leave a comment. Come on back for more videos. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.